Duplicates, extra spaces, misspelt words, poor formatting, all make our job harder than it needs to be. And that's not even a complete list of dirty data types. Today's tutorial is all about mastering data cleaning in Excel. And we've got a data set that's a bit on the wild side with all sorts of common issues. But don't worry, we'll tackle this together, starting with the basics and then moving on to the more advanced topics. Let's dive in. First step is to make our data readable by auto-fitting rows and columns, and this will help us see our data clearly as we clean. Simply head to the top corner of the worksheet and click the triangle to select all of the columns and rows, and then move your mouse between the column labels until the double-headed arrow appears, and then double-click and repeat for the rows. Excel automatically adjusts the width or height to fit the content, and it's a quick fix to avoid overlooked data because it's cramped or cut off. Now that we can clearly see our data, let's move on to identifying and removing duplicates, which is essential for data integrity. I can quickly identify duplicates in the ID column with conditional formatting. On the Home tab of the ribbon, conditional formatting, highlight cells, rules, and then duplicate values. I'll go with the default setting, but notice you can choose from these options or even create your own custom format. Now click OK, and now we can see which rows have duplicate IDs at a glance. Now if you want to remove duplicates, go to the Data tab of the ribbon, Remove Duplicates. Here, choose the columns that you want to compare. Now in this case, I want to check for duplicate rows, so I want all columns in my table selected. I'll click OK, and you can see Excel does the heavy lifting by deleting any duplicate entries, ensuring each row is unique. Extra spaces can be a real nuisance, making your data inconsistent. And sometimes they're obvious, like the extra spaces between Mike and Tyson, Anna and Belle, and Peter and Parker. And other times they're less obvious, like the space in front of Mary Jane. And sometimes they're downright sneaky and are hidden in a cell. As you can see here, the cursor is a few spaces away from the end of the text. To clean them, we can use the trim function. Simply select the cell you want to clean. It removes the extra spaces. I'll copy it down. You can see the data now looks correct. I'll copy this. And then all I need to do is paste it as values over the top. You can do that via the Paste Special dialog, or Microsoft 365 users can use the keyboard shortcut, Control Shift V. This simple formula is a game changer for data consistency, but I don't need it anymore, so I'll delete it. Blank cells can disrupt data analysis, so let's clean them up. I've got some here in the region column. So I'll select the data, and then to quickly select the blank cells, go to the Home tab, find and select, and then go to Special. Or you can use the keyboard shortcut, Control G. Here I want blanks, click OK, and you can see the blank cells are selected. Now, I don't know what the regions are, so I'm going to enter TBA, and then press Control and Enter to enter it in all selected cells in one go. Let's just undo that because another option is to copy the value from the cell above. So simply type equals and then up arrow and again Control and Enter. And now you can see that it's referencing the cell above. Now I'm going to go back to TBA because that's more appropriate for this data set. To maintain professionalism, it's a good idea to run a quick spell check. I'm going to spell check columns D through F, ignoring the names and the numeric columns. And then on the review tab of the ribbon, we've got spelling, or the keyboard shortcut is F7. Now it's found an error with excellent, so let's change all of those in one go. Next, it's found Asgard. Let's add this to the dictionary because this will be a common name I'll be using in other files. And we're good to go. Correcting typos and misspellings is a small step that makes a big difference. And it's a good idea to also run spell check on any reports before you send them out. Navigating through Excel's capabilities can transform the way you work with data. If you're eager to unlock even more powerful techniques, especially around formulas, my advanced Excel formulas course is perfect for you. It's designed to elevate your skills and confidence in handling complex data challenges. You can find the link to the course in the video description. The common adage, prevention is better than cure, also applies in Excel. For example, rather than having to fix spelling errors and typos, we can prevent them with drop-down lists. For example, let's select the region column and then on the data tab of the ribbon, I want data validation. I'm going to allow a list of items. Now for the source, you can select a range of cells that might contain the items that you want in your list. 
I don't have any, so I'm just going to type them in. And then click OK. And now I can select from the list. And if I try to enter something that's not in the list, I get an error. This simple tool can avoid a lot of work tidying up your data later on. One of the best things you can do to avoid messy data in the first place is to store your data in an Excel table. First, you need to make sure your data is in a tabular layout. That is, each column contains the same type of data. In this case, I have columns for the date, ID, name, region, and so on. And then each row represents a unique record. Also notice my column headers are in a single row. That is, they're not split across multiple rows and there's no merged cells. When you're ready, use the keyboard shortcut, Control T, to format the data in an Excel table. My data has headers, so I'll click OK. The first thing you'll notice is the data is a lot easier to work with. The headers are clearly formatted to differentiate them from the data, and the rows are banded to allow you to easily glance across a row which is super important in white tables. And if I scroll down, notice that the headers are automatically pinned to the top of the sheet. And there's filter buttons for each column that allow you to easily sort or filter your data. You can quickly choose different styles from the gallery and hovering over them gives you a preview. And you can change the style options. For example, I could add a total row and then down here, I can choose an aggregation method We'll go with some for this one. And this one, we might want to find the minimum price per unit. Errors in formulas can be a sign that there's a problem that needs investigating and fixing, but there are more elegant ways to display them, especially in your reports. For example, let's add a column for sales and we'll calculate it based on the quantity times the price per unit. Notice the formula refers to the columns by name instead of G2 times H2. And these are called structured references, and Excel inserts them automatically when your data is formatted in an Excel table, and they make writing formulas super easy. When I press Enter, the formulas copied down the column for me, and you can see where the price per unit is missing, I have value errors. Now, instead of displaying the error, we can return something else by wrapping the formula in the if error function. For example, here I could return the text missing, although having text in a column containing numbers is not ideal. So alternatively, I could return blank with two double quotes. Or if I want to return a number, for example, zero, I don't need double quotes. There's no limit to what you can return here. It could even be another formula, but keep in mind that you want to avoid returning text in a column containing numbers. I like to use plain numbers in my raw data just to keep things simple and uncluttered. For example, avoid currency and accounting formats. Instead, use general or number during the analysis phase. When you're working with large numbers, it's always helpful to add comma separators, but don't use this comma separator here because it converts it to the accounting format. Instead, go into the Format Cells dialog box and check the box for Use 1000 Separator. I'll also format the date column. Let's just go with a short date. It's currently displaying date and time, but there's no time component to these dates, so short date will do. You can reserve fancy formatting for your reports. Find and Replace is a powerful tool for bulk corrections, like needing to update a term or correct a common mistake across your data set. Here in the price per unit, I'm going to replace inf because we've seen with the formula error that text in a numeric column can cause problems. You'll find it on the Home tab and under Find and Select, we've got Replace, or you can use the keyboard shortcut Control H, which I prefer. In the Find field, I want inf. And in the replace field, you can enter something else, or in my case, I'm going to leave it blank and have an empty cell. With the options expanded, notice you can also replace formats, as well as customize where and how it searches. I'll click replace all, and we've found six, and we're good to go. For presentations, removing grid lines can make your spreadsheet look much cleaner. Simply go to the View tab and uncheck grid lines and that will make your data stand out.
Now, the techniques we've looked at so far are great for one-off cleaning tasks, but if you find yourself repeating these steps each week or month before you can complete your analysis or reports, then check out this video next on how to automate these steps and get updates to your data with a single click. I'll see you in the next video.